Prepping for the dyeing of the fiber and safety first. Protecting most of my clothes and also because we're going to be using powdered dyes, I always wear a mask coverage because if the dye powder is airborne, airborne, you don't want to get that in your lungs. Here's my dye partner. <laughs> and Camera our videographer. Man. Thanks, Meezy. So the dye has been soaking in a combination of citric acid and water. It started out warm. It's been soaking for about an hour. So these are the two different types of fibers. You can even see when they're wet how different they are. Get in closer. Now we're going to squeeze most of the water out of them because we just want them damp when we're dying. Okay. Not being super precious about this, you can see I'm getting little bits of dye from my gloves onto the fiber, but with the colors that I'm planning, not much of that is going to have any impact. I'm being very gentle, obviously, this is raw fiber. We don't want any felting to happen because of it rubbing together. So you don't, we just want it damp. You don't want it soaked. If there's a lot of water in the fiber, that's less space for color in the fiber. But the water is part of the process of getting the dye into the fiber itself. Okay. So we're gonna go with a combination of colors. Um, I've decided that brown, red, and yellow are what we'll use on this fiber. And I think I want the base to be primarily brown. So I've got right now four cups of a little warmer than room temperature water, which I'm going to add some citric acid and dye And the interesting to. thing about this fiber is that like it, it sticks to wet surfaces. Right now my gloves are wet and it, it's sticking to me pretty well. So I'm gonna put the bases kind of in a circular setup in the hopes that that will expose pretty much all of the fiber. This is gonna be more of a hand painting scenario where I'll specifically place dye around the fiber and I'm hoping to get similar concentration, obviously different fibers, so they'll take the dye differently, but this way I have exposure to as much of the surface of the dye as possible. Okay, so we have our water. We're gonna add some citric acid to that. Um, we just play with proportions of things. Citric acid is a mordant that helps the dye fix to the fiber. So if we're having trouble with dye bleeding after the process, we often add more citric acid to help that. But for this time, we're gonna do, for four cups of water, we're gonna do about a tablespoon of citric acid. And the dachi's writing down what we add because that helps us to keep our re recipes the same. And actually, since we have two of these, foam tops. I'm going to make it two tablespoons for this four cup solution. And just get the citric acid dissolved in there. This is actually going to be our dye stock. And I'm starting with a decent amount of water because it's much easier to make something darker if the dye concentration is not what you want in the beginning than it is to get it lighter after the fact. So if it starts out a little bit light, We'll go in and add dye. We like to play, I mean. Yeah, and I with the color. We're trying to be specific in terms of making our notes, but the color itself, it's an experimentation. All right, so I'm gonna open the dye powder now, so that means masks on. Masks on. Mm -hmm. I don't okay. know, because we're, we're doing two of them, so. Yeah, we're gonna yeah. go with one teaspoon of brown. Which, we're using that whisk or this one? We're using this whisk. 
so the water temperature is warmer than lukewarm but not hot and that's so that we can help the dye dissolve we found that a whisk helps to dissolve the dye in water better than a spoon Right, it's not so we've got about a cup of the brown mixture in here, which is a quarter of the total dye stock that we made before. So we're going to start by um, getting as much of this color into both tanks as we can. So we just start turning the bottle over. I mean, it'll come out in drips. So I'm actually squeezing the bottle. And I don't want to do too much in terms of um, liquid, I don't want to put too much liquid in at one time because what I want is a similar concentration around the skein. And if it's more water than the hank can absorb, then that'll be dye stock sort of wasted. And I'm going to let Adachi do some on the other hank. Nizi can get a close up. So we can try to evenly distribute because the first amount of dye that you put anywhere on yarn or on fiber is going to be sort of the heaviest concentration. So we try to be even in the distribution. You can already see that the two different types of fiber are showing the brown differently. Mm -hmm. This one is a bit lighter. I feel like that's because that one is white. This one's not. Yeah, it's the pretty. base colors themselves are different, so that will express mm -hmm. the dye color differently. We consider this to be sort of a hand painting process. If you ex if you um, use some pressure and press the dye out of yarn or fiber, I mean, you'll see the liquid come out of the fiber, but you'll also notice that where once it was sort of speckly, splotchy around, if you press the dye, now you're getting liquid that you can use and absorb into the undyed area. And we're trying to be minimal in the water waste and we're also trying to get a deep concentration of color. And we're trying to avoid felting. So it's just a very slow, careful um, hand dyeing process. One of the things you check is the underside of whatever it is you're dyeing may be much lighter because it's the dye clear. hasn't made it through. Like here, you can see this is undyed. So one of the things I can do is put some dye into the area underneath. And Adachi's hank also has undyed. So I can put it underneath so that the top doesn't get any darker, but the bottom kind of gets an equal expression of the, of the dye. And as you press it out and squeeze it, if you look really closely, you can see that the color has stayed in the fiber and the water around it is clear. That means the actual dye powder has really soaked in. On mine, I'm still getting some color out. I so use that over here. Doing them together allows us to get some color yeah. mm -hmm. into the other hank. And I think we'll just do another cup and see how much more brown we can get this fiber. Because the water yeah. that comes out of this is clear, which means um, we've exhausted, it's called exhausting the dye, meaning all the color that's going to go in here has gone in. So we have a lot of undyed sections left, so we've taken another cup of our dye stock and we're going to hand paint that by purposely adding color to these um, sort of clear base sections. And the two different fibers are already showing a very different expression of the dye. I'm going to use about half on here and let Adachi continue to hand paint. I'm going to lift my fiber, turn it over, 
this one has taken on the brown quite a bit, but I think we're gonna need some heat to get this to exhaust. So heat, um, a little bit of movement and friction, water and a mordant like citric acid are a big part of getting the dye to take. So I'm gonna put the other half on here. So now, oh, now the color's darkening a bit. So we're doing half and half. And then wherever there are undyed areas, that gives us an opportunity to speckle or do some variegation with other colors, which is what we have planned. Now we wanna add some additional color. So we're keeping our masks on because we're gonna add that color by just directly applying our powder dye to our fiber. And that should make some very concentrated speckles. Misi gets a close up, you can see there's still some areas in both hanks of fiber that are open, meaning they don't have as much of the dark brown. And we're gonna kind of focus there with our paintbrush technique. So we have dry paintbrushes and we dip them into the dye. We know that they're clean and won't make any colors of their own. So they'll take whatever dye powder we put on them and we're gonna sprinkle in those different areas. And even though it's dry dye powder, with a heat setting, which is in our case, putting this in the oven, it will soak into the fiber. We try to get an even distribution. And then once you have some areas where you have just done the sprinkle technique, Adachi's doing red, I'm doing yellow. Then you can actually use the paintbrush to press in those dye powder bits so that they actually attach themselves to the fiber. So on mine, it's very subtle. On Adachi's, you can see the red where she has speckled and she's getting a pretty deep concentration over there. Okay. Now we're only getting exposure to one side of the fiber right now. So we're gonna turn it over and do some more of this technique on the other side. When we're turning it over, we have to be careful again because anytime you're moving fiber or yarn that's non-superwash, you want to avoid too much agitation, which helps you avoid felting. felting. We always want to keep our powder closed when we're not using it. I'm going to turn this one, gently turn this one over. Adachi's working on red on that side. Okay, I'm going to turn mine over. So I'll go back to doing some more yellow on this side. Oh, I just realized there's a lot more open areas over here. This one is a lot more. I don't want to disturb it too much. But... Okay. I think the yellow is going to be pretty concentrated Ooh. in this one. I have some really nice yarn for Chanel to play with. The truth color really comes after heat setting and a couple rounds of rinsing. So it actually now switch.
<laughs> you get to, you have a lot of control over yeah. where the color goes Gotta and what these. you want it to look like when you're doing it, maneuvering it with your hands. So to me, these look like gradients of the same colorway. One is very intense and expressed very brightly. The other one is much more muted. Um, I like it. And I know that they'll spin up differently as well, but even in the dye process, we can already see some of the differences. So Adachi, how do you feel about the way this looks? Do you want to keep any of the white areas? You want to? Uh, I think we should keep some of the light areas, but okay. I think the speckles are distributed pretty well. Okay, then we're going to leave this as it is. And I'm just spreading it out. We're going to put this pan in the oven. And we're gonna let it sit in the oven for about 20 minutes on a very low temperature. And we'll be able to tell by the water that comes out of the hanks whether or not all of the dye color has been absorbed. All right. Here we have uh, the, I'll call it baked and rinsed fiber. I have not done this before, so I see a lot of um, halo, but I can still separate it out. So Chanel, I hope this is not, <laughs> I hope that this is still spinnable. Um, what I'm doing now is I've rinsed it with a little bit of wool wash and I'm drying it by putting it in a towel. And I use that towel to press out the moisture. I've already done a lot of moisture, gotten a lot of moisture out of it, pressing it in the towel, but I'm doing a little bit more. I don't want to rub it because it's wool. <laughs> this is the BFL. And all I really want to accomplish is get most of the water out so that I can then lay it out to dry. Um, I'm gently rolling it right now, and then I'm just going to squeeze. You can see some water still coming out. And then I'm going to lay this out. The beauty of living in Florida is I can put this out to dry and it won't take very much time out there. The second skein, here's Finn, needs to be rinsed. So I believe that this one is probably going to bleed a little bit. So I'm putting it into some room temperature water. And I'm just going to spread it around a little bit. I'm going to add a little tiny bit more wool wash I'm using soak. I don't want to agitate the fiber, but I do want to spread the soak around in the water. And I'm going to let it sit in here and kind of absorb the rinse water. And any dye that hasn't been absorbed into the fiber, I'm just going to give it a chance to make its way out. I don't want to mess with it too much. But after I've let this sit, and I probably will do one more rinse to make sure that the water is clear. And then I'll dry this one as well. 